So now we move to our uh, the next concept, which is the most um, important one here. So uh, diffusion efficiency. How do we define diffusion efficiency? So the goal is to quantify the efficiency with which information can be communicated using a diffusion model. So given a random walker on a graph G, we will compute these two measures, okay? So we will learn about these two measures um, now. The first one is called the shortest path probability, which means uh, the probability of a random walker taking the shortest path to reach a particular uh, destination. And here, the second one is the mean first passage time, okay? So this is actually the average number of steps or hops that the random walker needs to take to reach his destination, okay? The average number of steps that he needs to take to reach his destination. And the other one is in terms of a probability, okay? The probability that the walker will find, will find the shortest path. Now, so to do that, let's look, rem remember the story of Bob who actually, got, you know, uh, wanders or uh, goes through different edges on this graph. He wants to explore a city, okay? Let's say uh, Tokyo. And then his goal is that he doesn't have a very specific destination. He wanders around, he's a random walker, but ultimately, let's say, through this random walking on this graph, he wants to reach or visit this Tokyo Tower, okay? So how do we define diffusion efficiency? So also these, you can see guys that these concepts were uh, introduced recently, not, not, not a long time ago, in 2013 and 14 by uh, Goni and like uh, their colleagues. So they turned out many, uh, you know, good papers out of introducing these nice uh, graph theory based concepts and investigating efficiency of on, on graphs. So what is diffusion efficiency? It is defined as the number of times a random walker needs to commence a new random walk from his starting point to ensure that he ultimately reaches his destination uh, at least one occasion by the shortest path. So imagine I'm just saying, so let's look at this. The first day, you try to find the shortest path. So let's say that this is maybe the shortest path, okay? So this is the shortest path. The first day, you're starting from, uh, you know, uh, the hotel here. So Bob starts from the hotel. He wants around. So let's say the first day, he goes along this path, okay? So, and then... The next day, he needs to start over again, so he does his walk again from the starting node. And then this time, he walks this way, okay? So ultimately, after doing this many times, so we want to count the number of times, okay? This is important. How many times it takes um, for, you know, like, uh, how many times it takes for Bob, basically, to reach his destination, Along what? Along the shortest path at least once, so the first time, okay? So let's say maybe the third or the fourth day he finds the shortest path, okay? So that's the idea. So we want to know how long does it take for a random walker to discover the shortest path. That's the idea, okay? So that's the idea. But there are many ways of formalizing this uh, mathematically. Um, we're, we're going to look at this definition and how it is being uh, formalized by uh, these authors, okay? So, how to derive the first step? Let's look at like, how to derive a measure of diffusion efficiency. The first step, we define a matrix U, okay? So, this matrix is simply defined as the multiplication of the graph adjacency matrix, okay, whether weighted or binary, by the inverse strength of the, the node. So here what we have, we have a matrix S. What is our matrix S? It's like, you know, uh, if it's like a binary graph, this will represent the degree. But here it's the strength. So we, ha we have seen this before. It's the strength of node, uh, of node 1, okay? So what does this mean here? It means that each element ij, so if you have your U matrix, and you have i and j. 
So this is exactly uij, okay? So this element of matrix U denotes the, if you guys remember, the probability that a random locker goes from node J to node I, okay? So remember we read it this way, it goes from node J to node I, and this is what we defined earlier when we were looking for what? The search information, okay? So it's just taking the weight and dividing it or normalizing it by the strength of the node uh, from where the walk is starting. So you go from J to I, this is W um, I J, but then you might have other nodes here. So you take the strength of node J, okay? Great. Now, this is quite simple. And here, just to remind you, this means that, now you can see guys how things will all get connected together. It's like, uh, this, the search information is basically a multiplication. If you define the matrix U, it's just multiply, multiplying the, uh, you know, the different, uh, you know, like elements of U that are along this path. So this specific path. So we want to go from U to A1, A2, until AK, and then node V. Okay. So basically, this is just, you know, these are, these are simple elements of the matrix that we're, we're, we're selecting and we're walking from one node to another to get to our graph, to, to get to our destination, okay? So, uh, great. So this is another way of looking at the probability of a random walker from one starting point to another one. Now, here, there's, there are many things about, there are many concepts that are built on this U. So this U, you guys need to really remember it. So it's, it's, it's used in different theories. Uh, so for example, if you know the Markov chain, uh, U is actually what we call the transition matrix of the Markov chain with states corresponding to the net, network nodes or graph nodes. Uh, but today we will look at the second concept. So the second concept is the Laplacian, okay? So this matrix U is connected to uh, the Laplacian of a graph, which we have seen uh, before. I just covered it very briefly, but today I'm going to go slightly deeper, okay? Because Laplacian is used in different theories. It's, it's used, the Eigen de decomposition of the Laplacian, uh, it's used to explore the structure and topology of a graph. So let's first talk about the Laplacian and then see how it connects to this uh, matrix product WS inverse, okay? So here, the Laplacian of a graph G is a transformation of its connectivity or adjacency matrix. So before, I, I know that we haven't explored this, but this is something to keep in mind. We might uh, look at these in more details at some point. So the eigenvalues of graph Laplacian, they provide clues about it's connected components, so we might know how many connected components a graph has if we analyze the Laplacian, the Eigen, you know, uh, values of its Laplacian matrix. Community structure, so later on in one of the next lectures, we'll look at algorithms that uh, aim to detect communities or modules within a graph. And also bipartiteness, uh, bipartiteness of a graph. So what is a, a bar, a, a bipartite graph? So let me explain this um, by part tight graph. So this will tell us if a graph is bipartite or not. So imagine we have these nodes, okay? And we have another set of nodes here. So a graph if set is said to be bipartite if we can split the nodes into two independent sets such that there is no connection between the nodes in each set. So these nodes are disconnected within each set, okay? So that, and then for uh, the second set also, the, the nodes are disconnected. There are no edges connecting them. However, if we go from one set to the other, we find that each node in the first set connects at least to one node in the other set, okay? So this is what we call a... Uh, bipartite graph. So um, these are the things, there are many, many nice mathematical properties of the Laplacian uh, that allow us to understand and investigate the structure of a graph. So here, 
How do we define the Laplacian? So it is defined as a matrix of size n by n, if you have n nodes in your graph, and it's defined as uh, the first definition is basically where we're taking the uh, as the, the diagonal strength matrix that we defined earlier, okay? So this matrix. And then what we're doing, we're just subtracting the W, okay? So we're subtracting the W, subtracting the W. And here it means that in this Laplacian matrix, on the diagonal, we have the degree of the node, the node degrees. And any all the other elements, we have the reverse weight, okay? So the Laplacian matrix basically reverses the polarity of the off-diagonal. And um, so these are off-diagonal. They're not on the diagonal. They're off-diagonal elements. And sets the diagonal to the node degree or strength, depending on whether we have binary or weighted graph. Now, this is an example. So let's look at this example. So we have here the Laplacian matrix of this graph. So these are the nodes, and it's there. It's quite easy to compute. So one, two, three, four. So you guys notice that these are the degrees of the nodes. So node two, for example, has a degree of three. Okay, and the rest is just you know if we have ones here, so it's just negative one. So this is a Laplacian. Now there is another way we need to. Um, generally, it's better to use the normalized Laplacian. So we normalize by by each each basically connection is normalized between two nodes i and j is normalized by the strength or the degree of the node so guys you remember this what is this this is the probability of the random walker going from i from uh i to j or j to i okay so uh here this means that for the normalized laplacian what we have, you know, is that when we define it this way, okay, so the diagonal is set to 1 because we're dividing, actually we're dividing everything by SI. So this is what we're doing. It's just dividing by SI. So this becomes 1. And it's like a normalization process, okay? So it's very simple. And here, what do you guys notice? That this is actually our U matrix. So the Laplacian is basically defined as the identity uh, matrix, okay? And from the identity, we just simply uh, retrieve this, um, uh, the, the U matrix. So that's the definition of the Laplacian. So here, how do we update this? If we want to normalize this, lambda prime. So what we need to do is we need to divide by the degree. So for the first column, W, I, J, so we have I and J, so we divide, divide by S, J. So S, J here is 2, so this becomes 1, and here we divide by 2, okay? And for the second one, uh, we divide by 3, so this is the uh, uh, S, 2. So here what we have is basically this becomes, if I do it, 1, okay, so normalization, and we're normalizing it. So you guys can see how we're doing it. It's so simple. Now, in many textbooks, so this is important, uh, you can see that the normalized Laplacian is defined as 1 minus, like identity minus S um, inverse of S times W. Okay? So it's the other way around. And this is because Wij goes from I to J. But in our case, when we say, well, Wij here in this notation, it means like we're going from J to I, and I'm following the same notations as in the uh, textbook. So uh, here we have also uh, the probability. So the probability changes. So instead of having SJ, we're going to take SI because we're going from I to J. So we're just reversing through a few things, but it's the same. So if you see this notation, it means that uh, it's just we change the way uh, we're noting the, uh, the, the directionality, basically, of our uh, path, okay? So after defining the normalized Laplacian, the next step is, you know, we can investigate the eigenvalues of the normalized Laplacian. And this is something um, we're not going to do today, but this is a nice, a very nice graph plot that shows that the eigenvalue, okay, so the eigenvalue that a graph is taking 
uh, the distribution of the eigenvalues, they, they can tell us a lot about the structure of the graph. So for example, when you have a value that is very close to zero, uh, this means that basically you have communities or modules in the graph, okay? When you have a value that is close to one, it means you have different motifs. So we will see motifs in, that, in one of the next lectures. But here it means that you have different, uh, you know, kind of um, uh, small sub subgraph repetitions in in your in your in your um, in your graph. For example, we see the motif of four repeating twice. Okay, so one, two, three, four, and then here we have it again. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, so and then also if you have the eigenvalue of the normalized Laplacian matrix close to one point five. It means your, your graph is bipartite, okay? So this is really interesting. How come that this adjacency matrix that we mathematically formalized it as this tells us all this, you know, information about, about the graph structure and topology? Now, there's another thing. So it's important to normal to do also sometimes um, that we want this matrix to be symmetric, the lambda prime. So... To make it symmetric, uh, we just divide by the strength of both node SI and SJ, so the square root of the strength. So if you go from node I to node J, and you have this connected to different other nodes, okay? So here you take the WIJ, and you normalize by the strength, the square root strength of, you know, uh, node I and square root strength of node J. So this is to make it symmetric, okay? So this is the formula, and if you expand this matrix, each element, uh, ij of this matrix, is basically uh, uh, wij divided by the, the, the product of the square root strength, okay? Great. Now, after we define this, so we go back, so we know that uh, the Laplacian is, uh, this matrix U basically is used to define the normalized Laplacian. Now, going back, after defining our U matrix, what we will do, we will compute the shortest path probability to go from node I to node J. So remember that here, for to compute the diffusion efficiency, we're looking for this, okay? The shortest path, uh, the probability of finding the shortest path on a graph, okay, by randomly walking on it. So back to the story, we have our U matrix here. And then what we define next, we define these, uh, this matrix UJ. So what is matrix UJ? It's just um, matrix U, but we take the, the Jth row and set it all to zero. So what does this mean in terms of probability? So before I give you guys the interpretation, I want you to think about it. So you have a graph. We built the matrix U. What is the matrix U? Simply now taking the weight, dividing it by the strength, okay? So it gives you the probability for a walker to go from node I to any other node. Now, if we set all of those to zero, what does it mean? If we take that row in matrix U, row J, and we set it to zero, what does it mean in terms of probability or in terms of walking? Yeah, it cannot, the walker can never visit node J. So it's disconnected, yes. So node J cannot be uh, visited by the walker anymore. So we're excluding it. So here, a walker cannot reach node J from any other node. So the probability uh, to take, you know, from any node J to K is always zero for any K. Okay, so that's what it means. And then next, we have seen this before. So when we take the power matrix, if I take this, so before I give you again the definition, we have seen that if I take the power uh, matrix, so you, I put it, I raise it to the power of H. What does it mean in terms of walks? You guys remember. So this is the probability of a random walker, but now I'm raising it to the power of H. So what does it mean? So it means that, yes, so this is the number of hops or steps you need to take, okay, 
to walk from node I and node J. So this is basically tells you the probability to go from node I to node, let's call it K, in exactly H steps. What is the probability? That's what the matrix U uh, is telling, uh, telling us. Now, here, just to say it again, so um, UJH expresses the probability of a random walker traveling from one node to another node in exactly H steps with no option to visit J. That's what it means. Now we know how to translate this to plain English. Uh, now the next step is basically defining the probability. So now we can define the probability that a walker is at node J in H steps. So remember, we want to find, our goal is to find the probability of going from node I to node J along the shortest path. Okay, so that's what we are looking for. Now, we don't know the length of the shortest path, okay, exactly how long it is, but we're trying to guess this probability. So first we define the U and then the UJ, so we remove this, we want to know the probability of the random walker reaching any other point within exactly H steps, except this node, okay, so this is how we're in the, du the direction which we're exploring this. So next, what we define, we define uh, pi of ij, which is the probability that the walker is at node j in exactly H steps. So now, we're going back, we say, okay, how about we try to go from i to j in exactly H hops, okay? So how we define this probability, let's look at this step by step. So here, before I explain, I would like you guys to look at this formula and try to make sense out of it. So what is this? We just saw that, okay? So this is the probability, so of a random walker reaching, uh, so this is, you know, going from node I to, uh, we have, oh, actually here, so we want, yeah, so we're going from node I to node N, but to any other node, okay, so we're looking at all possible nodes, so let's look at it, so this is, you know, we have our matrix, we're going from I to any node N, okay, and then what we want, so this J, remember, it means that we set it off. So in our matrix U, this J location is set to zero. That's all it means, okay? But we're still operating on our U matrix. So we're going from node I to node, uh, to all, to visit all other, no all nodes N. And in exactly how many steps? H steps. So this is actually the probability, this is, the probability of going from node I to another node N in exactly H steps and knowing that we are not allowed to visit node J, okay, excluding node J. So this is what it means. Now, when we're summing over this, uh, it, you know, what we're getting basically is the probability that the walker is at any node other than J like right after H steps, okay? So at least H steps, we get that. Now, if we take the complement here, so one minus, so it means that this actually, if we take the complement, so this is the complement of the probability, it means we are at J at exactly H steps. So this is the complement of the probability. This is why we defined the U, J, like, and excluded this J, okay? Good. Now, let's go next. So, this is the probability that a walker is at no J in exactly H steps. Now, we don't know that the H steps is the shortest path or not. So, continuing, step three. Now, we define the shortest path probability of the whole graph. And we exactly, actually, what we're going to do, it's here. We are summing over all nodes. So, this is where we're creating just an average, and right there, the thing is that this one, what do you guys think about the H? It, it, it's constraining, right? So here it means that our, our uh, pi of ij, this probability, 
it's still we're still defining it with a hyperparameter okay so you can look at the h as a hyperparameter so it means you want to reach your destination in exactly h steps okay so you can you can what you can possibly do is actually take the h and then try to plot somehow this uh, the pi so let's call it big pi this one okay for the whole graph as a function of your your the, the parameter h okay now how can we possibly uh, so we can explore this many times, see whether, um, so for two nodes, we can see the probability of reaching, uh, of going from J to I in two hops or three or four or 10, et cetera. So in some cases, it might, you will see that they might not be connected. In some cases, you will see when you exceed a certain number, it doesn't work out. So you might, by exploring the space of the age, at least how many steps, you will be able to spot the shortest path, okay? So this is how you can possibly find it by exploring this, okay? And here, so what we have, so up to this point, this is the one to remember. So we're averaging it across all pairs of nodes in the graph. So this is the shortest path uh, probability that is indexed by our h, so in exactly h steps. 